So you want to be able to perform a VLOOKUP across multiple worksheets. In my scenario, I've got this list of transactions and for each product, I need to return the product category and also its price. And that information is found across these four product category sheets. So I'll start with the category column equals VLOOKUP. My lookup value is this product, comma, table array. So I'm going to go to the cutlery sheet and I'm going to select the first record. Now at the moment, the range reference is A2 to C2. And I'm going to say C100 because there are never more than 100 records used in any of these sheets. But there are a different number of records on each of the sheets. So that's probably the safest way to capture all of the data across these four category sheets. Now I do need to lock that range reference and I'm using the F4 key to do that. You can see that puts the dollars in both cell references there. If F4 doesn't work for you, then please type the dollars in as you see them in my example, comma. Now the product category is in the second column. So my call index number is two, and then I'm performing an exact match, which is false or zero. So if I copy this down, it's basically going to return the category for the cutlery products. Ultimately though, I want to look across all four sheets. Now a way you can do this is to use the if NA function. Now, if if NA doesn't appear on your version of Excel, you can equally use if error, and that works in the same way. But for the rest of the video, I am going to use if NA. So if NA has two arguments, value, and then value if NA. So in other words, if this VLOOKUP formula returns an NA error, I can tell Excel what to do. So it might be something as simple as not found. So you can see it returns not found rather than NA. Now we don't want to do that. We want to ultimately look across all the sheets. So what I can do is actually put another VLOOKUP in the value if NA argument. To make life a little bit easier for yourself, what you can do is copy the existing VLOOKUP and paste it into the value if NA argument. And then all you need to do is change the sheet name. So if I press enter now and copy this down, you'll see that it's now finding cutlery and bakeware category results. So I now need to incorporate the cookware category into my formula. So that would be another if NA. And the value if NA for that would be another VLOOKUP. And I would change the sheet name to cookware. And I'd need another close bracket at the end of the formula. Copy it down. And now we have cookware products being displayed in this list. And then last of all, we have drinks. So that's yet another if and a. Comma at the end, paste in the VLOOKUP and change the sheet name to drinks. Close the bracket at the end, press enter. And then I can copy this down. Now this formula will also work for price. It's just the price is in the third column of these tables. So what I can do is copy this formula, paste it into this cell, and I just need to change the col index number to three in each of these VLOOKUPs. And now I have the price. Okay, so I can make some improvements to the way we do this formula. Let's just delete our existing formulas. And one suggestion is to create a named reference to each of these tables. So what I would do is I'd click into the first table in any cell and then use Control A to select the entire table. And then up in the name box, which is to the left of your formula bar, you can give the table a name. So I'm going to type cutlery. 
and I must press enter to confirm it. By the way, you cannot have a space in a table name. And then I'm going to do the same for the other tables. Click in any cell, control A, and then give the table a name. Same with cookware, control A, name the table. So let's try a VLOOKUP using those table names. So I'd look up the product, comma, and the table array, well, I can type the name I gave the cutlery table. And you can see it appears in the IntelliSense list. The call index number is two, the range lookup is zero. Then I use my if NA trick again. Value if NA is this VLOOKUP. And all I need to do is change this name to the name I gave the bakeware table. And there you can see it appears in the IntelliSense list. So I close the bracket, copy this down. And so it's the same steps for the other tables that I've created. So if I copy this down, you'll see now I have all the categories. And if I want to get the price, I'd copy this formula, go over to the price column, paste it in, and then I just need to change these col index numbers to three. And I'll get the price for each product. Now I want to show you one other method which I think is an improvement on what we've done even with these named references. So I'm going to delete our existing formulas. And I'm going to delete the names that we've created. So to do that, you go to the formulas tab, you go to name manager, and you can delete your names here. So with this example, what I'm going to do is store these data sets in Excel tables. And the reason I'm going to do that is one that it provides a named reference for us. So a bit like the named references, they're easy to refer to when we're writing our formulas, but also tables create a dynamic range so that if we add new records, new products to any of these sheets, our VLOOKUP will automatically pick them up. That isn't the case with the other methods that we've used so far in this video. So how do I store these data sets in an Excel table? Well, I click in any cell and then I use the shortcut key Control T. I click on OK here. That gives me a new tab on my ribbon, table design, or it may say design on your version of Excel. And then I can give the table a name. Now what I do is I use this table name box rather than this name box. So first one I'm going to call cutlery and I must press enter. You cannot have a space in a table name. So I'm going to do the same for the other sheets. So click somewhere in the data, control T, click on OK, call it bakeware. And I'll do the same for cookware and drinks. Back to our sales sheet equals VLOOKUP, lookup value, this product, table array, cutlery. And just like the named references that we created earlier on, table names also appear in the IntelliSense list. So I can double click on cutlery, call index is two, and range lookup is zero. So I'm going to use if NA to look up the other tables. And if I press enter and copy this down, it finds the category for the other products and I can do the same for price. Just change the call index number to three.
So as I said earlier on, the benefit of using this method is that tables create a dynamic array. So if I went to the cutlery sheet and I go down to the bottom of this table, I'm going to create a brand new product. Cookware, 18 pounds. Now I'm going to copy that product name. I'm going to go to the sales sheet. Now before I create the new record, I'm actually going to store this sales sheet in a table as well. So I'll click in any cell, control T, click on OK. And I'll just call this sales at the top here. And then I'm going to go in and add that new record. So today's date, paste in the product name. And because I'm in a table, it's automatically copied these VLOOKUPs down. And you can see that it's picked up the category and it's picked up the price. If I put in a quantity of one, I get the total revenue as well. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.